In this video, we will discuss about the demonstration of the document strain gauge trainer model SF1009, uh, which have been installed at the National University of Technology Islamabad by Model Lab Technology Systems. Let's get started with it. First of all, if we talk about the usage of this strain gauge or the usage of the strain gauge trainer for students, uh, most engineers use strain gauges in the work and studies they use to find. Uh, strains in the sports of the buildings or the bridges if we talk about the uh, students uh, it can show students how to measure the strain in different ways and compare displayed strains with theoretical strains of dif for different materials and structures moreover if we talk about the learning outcomes of this trainer so here are some points first point is introduction to the equipment and the different bridges connection in this point, we will discuss about the uh, what is equipment, what are the parts of equipment, and uh, what kind of bridges are included in this equipment. Uh, we are talking about the weight storm bridges here. Second is strain and stresses in the bending system, as there are three types of system: bending, torsion, and tension system. Strains and stresses in the torsion system, strains and stresses in the tension system. Moreover, now let's see the parts of the equipment. Main parts of the equipment include the bending system, which is in the lower right corner. Uh, there is a cantilever supported with the uh, weights from the weight hanger. Second is the torsion system. It is at the middle right corner. As you can see, uh, the, there is a rod inside it. It is a torsion system. And then the third and the last system uh, is the tension system. Uh, it is uh, located at the left right corner. Next part is this strain display and the VDAS. Uh, we will talk about these later in our ongoing slides. First of all, if we talk about the strain gauge display, as you can see in the picture, uh, there is a LCD display which displays the uh, strains, uh, voltages, and the number of active arms and the gauge factor. Uh, alongside you can see on the main panel there are four input sockets uh, with gauge factor knob and the configuration knob. Configuration knob is used to set the number of active arms. Active arms are the leads coming from the strain gauges. And the, at the right side you can see the output for the VDAS. VDAS stands for the virtual data acquisition system. There is also a zero button. Uh, you can see at the pic uh, picture, press and hold to zero. It will zero all the readings. Uh, we have to perform it before every experiment we start. VDAS, uh, VDAS is uh, hardware as well as software with this uh, trainer SM1009. It collects the readings, the digital readings from the main system and shows on these on a computer. <coughs> Useful information about the strain gauges. Before starting the equipment, we will like to discuss about the, what is a strain gauge and what kind of strain gauges are used in our trainer. Main two types of strain gauges are used in our system. Uh, one particular type that you can see here at the bottom right corner, which with dimensions that are mentioned. Uh, this type of strain gauge is used to find the strains like tensile strain and the compressive strain, this particular type. And if we talk about the upper right corner picture, this type of strain gauge is used to find the shear and the torque strains. Uh, both these kind of uh, gauges are included in our system later on we will uh, show where are these located strain gauges are electrical sensors that measure electrical resistance their electrical resistance changes by the small amount when an external force stretches or compresses them it changes the resistance directly proportional uh, the changes in the resistance is directly proportional to the displacement note if we see a negative uh, strain value on the strain display then it means it the com uh, it is compressive strain that is being shown if we see the 
positive strain display then it will be tensile strain number of strain gauges that are included in our system there are four different colored wires that means there are four types of strain gauges in every system for in torsion for in bending for in tangent and they are all connected with the strain gauge display according to the Wheatstone bridge uh, the sketch of the Wheatstone bridge is shown in the picture like R1, R2 and R3 four resistors are shown four resistors are shown these are resistors correspond to the respective strain different number of strain gauges are used to get more accuracy but they need to be used in different orientations of the weight stone bridge if we will use only one strain gauge it will give us reading but it will be less accurate if we uh, use two or if we use four all of these strain gauges in a system at a time it will give us accurate or you can say sensitive values as well First bridge connection, Wheatstone bridge connection that we will discuss in this slide, it will be quarter bridge system. As you can see in the picture, only R1 is replaced by the strain gauge and all the other uh, resistances that are on this uh, strain display, they are replaced by the dummy resistors. Dummy are resistors are included uh, with the system. You can put those on those in uh, inper sockets then the bridge will be completed and we can see the output if we uh, do not place any one of these then the uh, system will not show any output okay uh, when a single let's uh, study something about the quarter bridge system when a single strain cage replaces one of the resistors, the output voltage V that we will find at the output is proportional to the strain on the cage. This is a quarter bridge connection. When all the resistors are equal to the output potential difference is zero, that means if the strain gauge value equals the uh, dummy resistor's value, then the output will be zero. Second bridge connection is uh, half bridge connection. The it is uh, it can be arranged in the two orientations. First is the half bridge mod um, connection and the uh, with opposite arms, and second is half bridge uh, model with adjacent arms. As you can see on the picture, in the opposite arms, or correspondingly, or you can say diagonal diagonal uh, strain gauges are used, and uh, in the half bridge uh, adjacent arms side by side uh, strain gauges are used what are these used for uh, why we use half bridge because it shows more accuracy than that of the quarter bridge quarter bridge uh, uses only one strain gauge half bridge uses two strain gauges two strain gauges give us same amount of strain but uh, output at the output we will see a greater amount of voltage greater amount of voltage means the accuracy of the strain gauge has been increased if we talk about the full bridge connection it is the most sensitive and the best practice to be done because uh, with this type of orientation we can obtain more accurate readings of these trains that are being uh, induced in the system on the like bending system torsion system or the tension system in the picture you can see you have to place uh, these gauges in some specific orientation for example gauge 1 and gauge 4 are compressive gauge 2 and gauge 3 are tensile what does, it, does uh, the tensile and the compressive mean if we uh, make or if we uh, make a stress on something it will try to elongate on one side or if we talk about the upper surface, it will try to elongate on upper surface and on the lower surface, the atoms or the molecules will be compressed. That's why uh, four strain gauges are used, two at the upper side and two at the bottom side. Upper side will 
calculate the tensile strain and uh, lower side uh, ga strain gauge as well calculate the compressive strain. Theoretical bridge equation uh, how we can calculate the amount of strain theoretically. With us that we have mentioned earlier if connected with the system can show the these values that means the actual strain coming from the system as well as the theoretical For how we can calculate the theoretical uh, all these parameters like the v naught gauge factor initial voltage or the input voltage or n number of active arms are to be put in the VEDA software then it will automatically calculate our theoretical bridge equation or the theoretical strain actual will be displayed on the uh, strain gauge display as well as on uh, VIDAS interference. I will show the VIDAS interference with you at the end of the video so we can uh, understand that interference well as well. Typical bridge connection here is a diagram uh, which shows how to connect a strain gauge with the strain gauge display. As you can see, only one strain gauge at the left side of the strain gauge tensile strain is attached at the number one input socket. All the other strain gauge input sockets are plugged with the dummy. Dummies are provided with the system and they all have the same resistance. For correct uh, polarity display, use sockets 1 and 4 tensile and sockets 2 and 3 for the compressive strain. So this point has to be in your mind as well to get the correct or you may say accurate values. Now moving on towards the experiments, how to do experiments, what to find in experiments. Uh, we will move to the user guide or the user manual as uh, most of the customers have the manuals with their systems. So I will guide you from that. Now get started with the experiments. First of all, we have the experiment number one, getting to know the equipment. In this experiment, we will be determining how to use the apparatus and what kind of data we can extract from the trainer. Here are some of the aims of the experiment. To use the planning system, make students become familiar with the use of the equipment. Number two, to show the equation used by the strain display. Number three, to use the planning system to show and compare different strain bridges connection, show the linearity of the strain measurement. Let's get started with the procedure. First of all, you have to make this table you can easily make this table in the vidas i will show you that how to make that table again first of all what you have to do there is a black cable large black cable or you can say there is a long black cable with the apparatus the trainer you have to connect that uh, cable to the bending system input socket connect the strain connection cable to the output socket of the bending system I am using the SM1009 strain gauge trainer user manual so you can easily find this with the strain gauge trainer. First of all we will be testing on the quarter bridge connection. Here is the procedure that how you can perform the experiment through the quarter bridge connection. First of all you have to connect only one wire or you can say only one strain gauge from the trainer. Here is it writ written as the red wire, okay? All the other connections has to be dummy that are provided with the strain gauge display. Switch on the power to the strain display and as we are using only one strain display or you can say as we are using only one strain gauge you, so you have to set the number of active arms to the one via the knob present on the strain gauge display adjust the gauge factor to be same as written on the back plate near the bending system. You can easily see what is the gauge factor. You have to uh, set the gauge factor through the knob on the strain display. Or 
if you are working parallel with the vidas system you have to switch on the vidas as well and uh, he it can uh, calculate all the readings for you automatically uh, i will show you later ab, uh, after this procedure how we can get the values from the vidas third number uh, you have to put out the knife edge weight hanger and you have to put it on the beam at the position 420 mm there is a scale written on the position then you have to place the knife edge on the display there will be some strains introduced in the uh, strain display you have to make them zero by pressing the zero and hold button now not the output voltage and the strain readings into the table if you are using the task click on the record value at this hook a small weight hanger now as uh, it is written in the user uh, user manual technically that the weight hanger has a weight of 10 grams so our first reading will be at 10 grams the small weight hanger is 10 grams add 4 cross 10 gram weights to the weight hanger i am reading the point number 9 that you have to make the total mass is equals to 50 grams now the output voltage and the strain readings into the table via the strain display or if you are using the vidas it will al automatically calculate these values and just you have to press the record data button in increments of 50 grams that means first we added 50 grams now you have to add five more uh, uh, weight weights to the weight hanger then you calculate the next reading of the strain as well as the voltage this was our quarter bridge connection so if we want to enhance the sensitivity or if we want to uh, make our results more accurate we have to use the half bridge connection first of all we will discuss the opposite arm connection to get this measure the same strain what does that mean as i stated earlier there are four strain gauges uh, available in our Uh, in any system uh, one will two strain gauges will measure the same strains and the other two will measure the opposite strain if we talk about the bending system two will measure the tensile strain and two will measure the uh, compressive strain so if we are used to opposite arm connection half bridge we have to use the same strain gauges that is if we are uh, talking about this strain tensile strain we have to use both the tensile ones repeat the experiment part but what you have to do is connect the red gauge and the blue gauge there are labeled clearly you can see at uh, at the trainer to the strain display as a half bridge opposite connection that we have stated earlier fit the dummy plugs into the two other sockets at just the configuration control to active arms now is equals to to via the knob present on the strain display again what you have to do is place the knife edge and uh, make the reading zero and add 50 grams of weight and take the first reading and further uh, add 50 grams of the weights and take the next reading we will talk about the uh, other parameters like calculating the strain uh, in the our next slides half bridge connection number 2 that is the adjuster arms uh, in this connection we use two gauges which measure the opposite strains for example if one measures uh, tensile strain then we will do be using the second gauge which will be uh, measuring the compressive strain now we have to connect the red gauge and the green gauge to the strain display and fit the two dummies into it adjust the configuration or uh, to the active arm number 2 via the strain gauge display now if we want more uh, of the sensitivity and the correct values of the strain we can use the full bridge connection uh, in this connection we will place all all of four gauges into the strain gauge display and we will calculate the readings from that correct the red blue to the opposite sockets connect the yellow and the green to the opposite that means if you are 
वन साइड द डायगनल दैन यू हैव टू प्लेस द अदर टू टू द अदर साइड ऑफ द डायगनल एडजस्ट द कॉन्फिगरेशन ऑफ द एक्टिव आर्म्स टू द फोर व्हाट वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट इन दिस एक्सपेरिमेंट इज that the full bridge gives the most voltage half bridge gives half of the four voltage for uh, four connection and the quarter bridge gives the much lower voltage than that of the half or the full bridge connection how we can calculate the theoretical value of this strain gauge Uh, our strain display will be giving us the actual value of this strain uh, now we have to find the uh, theoretical value so we have to use the equation as we have stated earlier in our slides uh, and then put all the values where it is written as n if we are use, uh, using quarter bridge connection that we have to put it as 1 if we are using the half bridge connection we have to put that uh, is equals to 2 and if we are using the full bridge connection we have to put the value of n to 4 then we will calculate uh, all the strain uh, theoretical strains of the trainer in this slide i will be discussing the output results of the our experiment of the bending system uh if all the conditions are met the result will be same as this but it can vary a little bit you don't have to worry if the the values doesn't uh, equal these values as the results taken uh, in this table are and un under some other conditions and uh, you are operating the operators in some other condition then the results will vary and strains will be different but it will uh, eventually be rounded up by the equipment now i will discuss some parts from this result the calculated and the actual strain result should be identical but the strain display may round up some results to the whole figure if the full uh, bridge should the full bridge should give approximately four times the voltage output of the quarter bridge you don't have to worry about this voltage thing we are calculating the strains in this experiment the strain value will be the same for all the quarter or half or the full bridge that the value of the voltage will be very and uh, it will give us more sensitivity the voltage is more than we will uh, uh, get the results more accurately or we can say that results are more accurate even quarter bridge results should be linear this shows that bending system with maximum load of the 500 gram you don't have to put the more weight than of the 500 grams uh, there are more weights available but that are for the tension system you don't have to put this on this system the gradients of the results should prove the theory of the bridgestone bridge the full bridge gradient should be four times that of the quarter bridge now get uh, to the experiment number 2 it is the same as the experiment number 1 but we have additional is the values of uh, the force the output voltage and the bending moment calculated start we can calculate it from the equation what you have to do is uh, follow the theory in the user parallel and you can find the values of the bending moment uh, it is easy uh, for the beam
I will skip this experiment as it is the same as that of the uh, experiment number one that we had done earlier. Now move to the experiment number three. It is related to our second system that is the torsion system. What we have to find in this system uh, aims are to show how to connect and use shear and the torque strain gauges to measure the strains in an object that twist to show how to compare displayed strains with the theory of the torsion system. Procedure to use the shear and the torque strain gauges study the strain gauge pattern for the torsion system. Note that the gauge underneath the beam are identical to the gauges above the beam. However, note that they are each rosettes. Rosettes means there are two sets of the strain gauges. Each, uh, each gauge is the rosset will measure the same amount of strain but the polarity is inverted. Uh, what does it mean? In the theory, as I had showed you earlier, in the torsion gauges there were two gauges in one rosette. Uh, both will measure the opposite values of the strain gauge. What you have to do first is to create a blank table like this one or you can easily create this table via the Vitas software if you are using it. Number third, connect the blue strain to the strain display as a quarter bridge. Set the number of active arms to one and set the gauge factor written on the bending system via the strain gauge knob. Leave the equipment to stabilize for approximately one minute and then press and hold zero button until the values are zero. Add a small weight hanger to the end of the torque arm. What is torque arm? There is a, a small rod available with the trainer. You have to put it into the end of the bending, uh, sorry, you have to put it on the torsion system end. It will screw into it. Again, you have to uh, apply the weight. First, we will apply one ten uh, grams of the weight hanger and the four additional weights to make the total weight of fifty grams. And we will put it on the torsion arm. This is the picture of the torsion arm. You have to put this small rod into the torsion system rod. You have to make the same connection for the uh, quarter bridge, uh, for the half bridge, for the full bridge as we have discussed earlier. There is procedure number two to compare the strains. Uh, what we will do is uh, when the software or the strain gauge display gives us one value, we will calculate this value via our equation as well. Uh, that is mentioned in the theory and we will check if the our calculated results and the theoretical results match or do not match. It is the same procedure as of the experiment number 3 for the procedure number 2 results to analyze we can uh, use these equation you can uh, see on your screens what are use equation 10 to find the torque use equation number 8 to calculate the polar moment of inertia use equation number 11 to find the shear stress and use equation number 12 to shear modulus divide it by 2 to find the direct strain see the equation number 13 these are the small equations that you can see in the user manual and do it yourself. Next is our tension system experiment. For the tension system experiment there is a large weight hanger present with the trainer uh, with a, a large number of weights that you can apply but uh, keep in mind that do not use that large number of uh, weights with other systems as it will break them. To show how to connect and use the strain gauge to measure the strains in two dimension, to show how to compare and display tensile strains into the dimension with the theory and prove Poisson's ratio. As the system is vertical and we are applying the weights uh, downwards, it will only produce the tensile strain. So we have to 
don't have to worry about the compressive strain here so first of all you have to uh, calculate this tensile strains only red and the yellow via red and the yellow gauges uh, make a table like this uh, we will put the values of load into gauges like for example there are the available weights you know, 1 up to 10 we will calculate the forces by multiplying it by 9.81 display tensile strain and the calculated tensile stress uh, this tensile stress will be calculated by the equation mentioned the theory and calculated tensile strain via the equation mentioned in the theory. Use the vernier instrument which is supplied with the trader to accurately measure the dimension of the specimen, its width and the thickness. Record the measurements into the result table. Upper side of the table you can see gauge factor, specimen dimension, specimen cross section, Young's modulus, etc. Correct the red and the yellow gauge to the torsion system to strain display as a half bridge that is opposite as I said the number of actor arms to two not these gauges will only measure the strain in the direction of the force leave the equipment to stabilize for approximately one minute and press and hold zero knob or the button note the strain readings in your table if we are you we uh, we are to use with us we can easily do it by uh, click on the record data values Fit the large weight hanger to the bottom of the tensile system specimen. Specimen can be changed. You can easily change them. There is a pin inserted in them. You have to put out that pin and you can change the specimen by doing this. The large weight hanger is 5500 grams. Add point 5 kg of weight into the weight hanger to make the total load of the 1 kg. Adjust the value of mass to 1 kg in the Vedas. You have to put these values manually into the Vedas. Then the Vedas will calculate the theoretical values of the strain. And the strain display will be giving us the actual values that are we getting from the live system. Note the strain readings in the table if to you are to use Vedas, click on the record data buttons. Add more weights uh, in the increments of 1 kg steps up to the 10 kg and you will uh, note all the values into the table. What is the result analysis? Use the specimen dimension to find the cross-sectional area. You, we can easily find it. Use the cross-sectional area and the force to find the stress. Use the value of Young's modulus and stress to find the theoretical strain. How does the theoretical strain? These are the result analysis. Procedure number two: compressive strains. If we are, if we are to measure the compressive strains. Repeat the procedure number one, but use only blue and the green gauges. What we are to study in this experiment, compare the displayed readings of the, these compressive strains with the displayed reading of the tensile strain from the procedure one. Use both set of the results to create the chart of the tensile strain. For other experiments, you have found that all a full bridge gives the better sensitivity and performance than the quarter bridge connection. How could you connect these four strains as a full bridge and make the strain display give the correct reading? Think about the equation. Okay. Procedure number three is to find the full bridge tensile and compressive strain. You have to make the table like this one. Um, again, I will uh, recall you that all these uh, data is available in the student manual. Just you have to read it carefully before doing an experiment. Again, I will suggest you to make preparation of the user manual. Okay. In this experiment, we have to set the number of active arms to n. There is a knob present on the strain gauge display and there is a point written as n. You have to place that knob up to that point. What we will analyze, note that even though compressive strain gauge do not produce as much output as the tensile strain, 
the full bridge works correctly. You can easily compare all the strain gauges as you can uh, see the systems are entirely different but there is some similarities according to the weight you can easily not th those. Optional tension systems as you know there are extra specimens provided with that you can change I these and make a uh, other experiments of yours. This is the setup to change the specimen. It is written and displayed in the user manual. You can e easily find these. Now move to the result sections. I will start with the Experiment number two, as I have discussed the results of the experiment number one in earlier stages. This is all the readings that we will get. Don't expect the readings to be same, but it will be s nearly same. For example, if the strain gauge gives the value 13 micro strain, it might give you 12 or 11 or 14. So you don't have to worry because uh, working conditions under which these readings were taken is different from your system. So you have to measure the readings according to your condition. You can easily plot this graph. How you can do this? You have to study the user manual of the Vida software. It is easy. You can do it by yourself. These are the readings of the torsion system. Uh, uh, once again, I will uh, remind you that the negative values, if you see negative values on the strain gauge, it will mean that the strain gauge is measuring the compressive strain. You don't have to worry that you, uh, how can the strain be negative. No, the negative sign only shows that the strain is being taken as compressive. And once again, you have to make sure that uh, you have set the fa gauge factor of the respective uh, system. Otherwise, the readings will be different, entirely different. If we talk about the results of the tension system, here is the results of the tension system. You can easily find these on the user manual of the SM1009. The whole experiments are not too difficult to perform now you are seeing the optional tension system specimens results as uh, the num uh, the materials are different you can see their strains that are being induced in them will be different as well like aluminium specimen brass specimen and the copper specimen uh, that's it for our this uh, discussion